All right, we're gonna go out and fish in the last four, five, six hours before dark here with my buddy Jimmy Sites from Spiritual Outdoor Adventures. How about that? Man, I'm ready. I nailed that name, Ooh, didn't I? Did I nail that you name? You killed it. You killed I it. I never ever said that name wrong, probably. And, ever. Well, and maybe. Parker, for 15 shows that we filmed together over the years, still calls it Spiritual Outdoors Adventures. Put the S on there. Well, I'll put S on mine. <laughs> <laughs> He's pretty simple, man. <laughs> but we're covering the boat up because we're going to have to go down some dirt road to get out of here. Yep. And uh, get this thing buckled down. Just will fit. Get my finger out from under it there real quick. <laughs> we, got a, we have a cold front that's moved in. It's only going to be 88. So It is a cold front. Yeah, I don't think it's going to affect the water temperature at all, so I think we're good. I feel like I'm in a Bass Pro Shop store. I mean, look at this. It's like a Bass Pro Shop store. You well, got so many lures and baits in well, here. Well, we got lures, we have fishing lines, lines plastics. we have hooks, rods, oh. reels, well, all kinds of lures. Ricky Clun's the only one that has more Ricky Clun crankbaits and jerk baits than I have, and I'm not sure that he does. I might have to drill a couple more of these in just in case. I might need them about that. Pretty cool. Where are all the? Where's your rack of Jimmy Houston sunglasses, though? I got one on right, right here. Right I know. Here. <laughs> I thought you'd have like racks. This of is them. my rack right here, right over my head. <laughs> <laughs> These sunglasses have paid a lot of bills around my house. Yes, sir. Okay, you got that. Yeah, let me strip it. Well, that'd have been good, but you know, I'm a... Last time I was here fishing with Jimmy, I had Rocky Kalmus, the uh, Buckus Award-winning linebacker. I had Brian White, the country singer. And uh, we got down here a little early, so we snuck a boat out, and we were fishing when Jimmy showed up. And we'd already caught a bunch of fish, man. It was so cool. We, we were having a good time. And uh, I'll never forget the next day, Jimmy comes rolling in, gets like two hours of sleep. He's been all over the world. He fishes with us all day, and he says, yeah, I'm headed down to Peacock Bass Fish tomorrow. I'm like, time out. You can't Peacock Bass Fish anywhere in the United States. You were going where, like South America somewhere? You remember that, Jimmy? Yep. Where was that? Or I just, think I, I think I was going. I think I was going to Venezuela. Okay. At that time, I think I was going to Venezuela. I go to Venezuela. He never sleeps. Brazil. He never sleeps. Do you ever? Yeah, sleep? I slept two or three hours last night. You just must drink that energy <laughs> drink constantly. I drink the energy drink. <laughs> I do. <laughs> I got Jimmy tying on. I got Jimmy tying on a crankbait back there, <laughs> and I'm catching fish. <laughs> Yeah, you I love did that it. to me I last time, too. I love it. I love it. I love it. I'm fishing with my buddy Jimmy Sykes, longtime buddy of mine. He's got Spiritual Outdoor Adventures television show. Great hunting and fishing show. I mean, tremendous hunter. And uh, we decided that we'd try to do a little fishing, catch a little fishing show together. We've fished together years ago, but it's been a long while. Uh, I don't know how long has it been, Jimmy, since we fished together. You know what? I think it's been ten years. Ten years! Yeah. Holy cow! We've done serious? some speaking together and stuff like that. You know, we, we I remember going to Kankakee, Illinois, and we did a oh yeah a fundraiser, and they put us on the stage on two stools and said talk for forty minutes. <laughs> yeah, and we did. We did, and I have. <laughs> finally, some they said y'all been going an hour. Will you shut up? <laughs> you know what's really funny though is is I remember you're sitting there, and and here's here's a typical Jimmy Houston for you right here. I'll never forget it. You sitting there on the stage talking and not missing a beat and he keeps looking down kind of between his legs and I, finally i'm like what's he doing he has his cell phone right <laughs> down here under his legs he's watching the oklahoma football game while he's doing this event i was <laughs> that's jimmy houston you only he right. could pull something like that off you're right <laughs> and then he gets me out here and says hey you don't need that bait you have on you need to tie on one of these so he catches a fish while he's got me tying on a bait that he says i shouldn't be using you don't get that thing tied on we'll catch another one you know what it's okay I, <laughs> I'm gonna do whatever he says. That might be the only one we catch all afternoon, I don't know. I was just a little bitty kid, and I grew up watching his show, see? <laughs> I hear that a lot. <laughs> you might think that's original, but it's not. <laughs> <laughs> and the other part of the coin is, it's true. <laughs> With much size today, this one feels a little better right here, though. I come off. Oh, he's on it. Hey, another one got it. Throw, there throw he is. right here, throw it There's a fish. school right here, out Woo, in front of this tree. On. There's a school out in front of that tree. Look at there, we dubs. Dubs right there. We got a double. Yeah, that's not a bad fish right there. There's a good fish. He's got about the same size. I'll take that dude any and day. Right, of the right week. out in front of that tree is a whole school right of fish. There. Now to not get that treble hook in you, there you go. It's gotta be careful. Yep. With all those trebles. Thank you. 
you got to be careful. That's just all there is to it. Yep, that would not be fun. However, I do know us. a painless hook technique where I can take it right out of you and you won't feel anything. Uh, that was how fun. many hooks up there? You should get another two back there because there's a school right out in front of that tree. All right. One of the problems when you get into a school of fish, what's a nice fish right there? Is a chunk. When you get into these fish in the summertime like this, is you get a school like we just run into there. We'd gone quite a little ways there without catching the fish. You get into a school of fish and they follow it out to the boat. Yeah. And once they see the boat, then they get scared. And, right. And you can't, they, they run off. You can't get them to bite again for a while. We can come back later in the day and catch them out of that tree. Teach me what you mean by putting a leader. So you're talking about a fluorescent leader on braided line. Well, fluorocarbon. Fluorocarbon. Because fluorocarbon you're catching three to four times more fish than I am, and I'm fishing straight braid to my bait. You learn pretty quick. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not a dumb person, so I'm, yeah, show me what to do here. And let's just uh, show all our, our viewers so that they'll learn the same exact thing. All right, here's what we're going to do. It's important. Let's, uh, I can set my trolling motor just to keep us out here, but let's pull over here. Let's pull over and tie up to a tree real quick. I need to retie my line also. It's getting kind of frayed. What is it afraid of, Jimmy? It's afraid of a big fish breaking. It's what's afraid of. Yes. But I'm going to pull over here and tie up to, to a stick with this wind blowing. That way my trolling motor's, uh, yeah, I can hit my spot lock on my trolling motor and it'll just keep us right in one spot. Really? But, oh yeah, but it's going to, uh, but it's going to, that's what I, out there when I caught that big fish a minute ago, you notice the boat never moved? Yeah. Because I hit that spot lock, it's, which is a deep water anchor. That's pretty incredible. Kind of like our power poles or so like shallow a GP, water a GPS kind of set up on it or something? Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's got a GPS wow. on the trolling motor and it, it just stays right there. It marks that spot and it stays on that spot. Uh, look right there, right under your uh, box, there's a, a, a little compartment and there's, a, there's a, a small rope in there. Okay. You want the big yellow one? That one will be fine, yep. This is Oklahoma, we call this a small rope. In Tennessee, you call this a big yellow one. Yep. <laughs> True. <laughs> yes. We call this a big one in Oklahoma. If we get rigged up, we might just sit here and make a few throws right here where we are. If you don't mind, I'm gonna hang on to your smoothie for tomorrow's tournament. All right, I'll give you a couple more in case you lose that one too. All right, don't let me forget to retie mine. All right, here's what we're going to do. We got some 12 pound Grand Slam Select. It's a copolymer line. And uh, it's green, so it's pretty much invisible into the water. And what we're going to do is we're going to add a leader. Give me a little bit more there. We're going to add a leader to your monofilament because you can see just looking at this right here, that's probably 50 pound braid. You can just see by looking at it, just yourself, just your naked eye, mm -hmm. and looking at that, see it against my hand there? Yep. It's almost impossible to see the, uh, the, the Grand Slam line, and yet you can see the other. So we're going to tie these two together. Now this is, this is called a double uni knot. And well, we may or may not get it right the first time. It's a pretty difficult knot to tie, to be honest with you. And there's a lot of ways you can tie two lines together. All of them are, they're all, they're all bad. <laughs> they're, they're all difficult. We're going to lay those two lines on top of each other. Now I'm going to come over here and make myself a little loop, like such. And I'm going to lay this up here. Now I'm going to go inside that loop six or seven times. Now that's why where it becomes difficult is I'm going to go inside that. So I'm going to go, and you see here, you got, you, it's kind of hard to do. One, pull myself a little bit more line. You see how it's hard to hold everything correctly. And that's why it's, it's a hard knot to tie. But it's difficult when you're trying to tie braid to, to monofilament or fluorocarbon. Three. And you don't always tie it right. Sometimes you tie it and it comes apart. Now I like to wrap it seven, seven or eight times. I don't know how many times I got it. I lost count, but it's probably five or six times. I lost my line, there it is. Now, once I've done that, I'm going to tighten that end of it up. So now that, that's part of, that's the, that's, that's the single part of a uni right there. You've got that. Now we're going to go down here and do the, uh, the same thing with the other end of it. With the braid? Yeah, we're going to come okay. down here. We're going to come down here and we're going to, we're going to make a loop. And then we're going to come around 
and go inside of that loop. Now, if we were, and we're not coming around and just wrapping it around the line, we're coming around and we're make, we're throwing that loop in it, making that loop, and then we're going to come around and go inside of that loop. You see what I'm saying? Yes. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to go through it about seven or eight times. So the braid's a little bit easier because it's bigger, it's easier to see, mm -hmm. but still, it's kind of kind of a hard deal. We're going to go in there. We're going to go through there eight times, and we're hoping we're going to tighten all this up, and it tightens up into a good pure knot that will not break. And 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 uh, this is the way you tie braid to monofilament. There's several different knots you can use. I tie a lot of different ones. I've kind of got down to where I end up tying this one here more than any other. And it, it all of them are hard for me to tie, to be honest with you. All of them are really hard for me to tie. It's, I can tie this one a majority of times. It comes out right. Okay. And we're going to tighten that up. Now, we've got a uni on e it, both ends, so what we're going to do, you don't want to tighten them up too much. You see, you got this little uni here, you got a big one. Now we're going to slide them together. Now, if you get it too tight, if you get it too tight, they won't slide together. Mm -hmm. If you tighten them down too tight on each end, they won't slide together. I got you. So you don't pull the loose ends then. Until, now we tighten it up. Until at the end. Now we tighten it up. Yeah. Now we've got, now we got the two lines tied together. Mm -hmm. So now, now you see that. This is pretty big braid. I mean, I don't know what that is. That feels like like 50 pound at least. It probably is because I was fishing a, a big stump lake. Yeah. Yeah, maybe 80. It's really really big line. We'll cut that off, and now we're gonna cut this off. Now you, this is gonna be going through the eyes of your rod, so you want to make this as small as possible. Right. Hold 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 that right there. Just hold that tight, and uh, so you want to get it get down there and, and cut it cut it off close. Yep. So you get down there and cut it off pretty close. And now there's there's your knot. Now that knot's not going to come loose. So we've okay. tied braid to monofilament. Thank you, Lord, for letting me tie that right the first time. <laughs> so okay, so here I'm we go. Right, now, what, whatever. I'm going to get me about. That's about five. I'm going to get me about ten foot of line. Okay, so about like fly fishing then. Yeah. If you tie if you tie braid on you know on your, if you tie a, a leader to fly you know you do use whatever not use on yeah. that. You use a double uni on that. Yeah. That's what I do. Same thing. Okay, I got you. And now and now now you want to tie to that. Now now the fish is not seeing your braid. Let's put it in So what is the purpose then of even having braid if the strongest line you've got is your monofilament? Well, there's two or three purposes to it. One is that you know you can use really big, tough line, and you got you know it could be down. Uh, you know, against rocks and stuff, and a fish pulling. Mm -hmm. and as long as he's pulling against the braid, it takes a lot more to break it. Uh, the second thing, and where we use it mostly, I really don't use braid on a uh, on a, uh, a casting rod, a reel, except maybe if I'm fishing for really big bass in really heavy cover with a jig. Right. Or I'm maybe pitching a jig in real heavy stuff, and it's like February, March, and I'm on a lake, lake like say Sam Rayburn or somewhere where I got really big fish. And you'll tie direct to the braid where you can hit that fish with 50 pound test line and just, just horse him up out of there. Gotcha. Now where we use it, where we use it a lot is we use it, we use it on these spinning rods and spinning reels. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is the, that is the principal deal. And, and the, the big advantage, the big advantage, the, the big advantage of using, of using the braid on the spinning reels is that it doesn't hardly twist. So you right. see I've got all this braid down here and there's not hardly any twist in it. It's 20 pound braid. But now what I appear my lure's all tied to, my lure's all tied to uh, to 10 pound fluorocarbon line. Yeah. So that's what we got right there. Now you'll start getting more bites because of that. You got, you got green fishing line on there. It's almost impossible to see in the water. And uh, you got better action down there on, on your lure. So your bait's got a little bit better action to it. And uh, now you got 12 pound test line instead of 50 like you had. Right. But, you know. Hey guys and gals, I hope you enjoyed that. We're out here working hard, doing videos all the time, and we really, really appreciate you watching more than you can ever know. Be here, be sure to hit that sub button and subscribe to our channel because we need every one of you. Hey, have a lot of fun. Let's go fishing.